Hi, my name is Carol Robertson. I'm a teacher here at Fulton High School. I want to welcome you to my classroom. I'm here on the video because I've written an article for the Science Teacher Magazine by NSTA. And the article is about modeling DNA. You know, we use a lot of models in science. In fact, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see some of the models I've got on my shelf in my classroom. And I'm sure you've got some models like that. But I want to share with you two different activities that I do with students in my room. And based on student feedback, they've ranked both these activities very, very high in helping them learn DNA structure. Now, you know well as well as I do that DNA structure is pretty hard to teach, to be honest. Something so small as a DNA molecule, much, much smaller than a hair on your head. It's tough for kids to visualize. And that's why we use models in science. So the first activity I'll tell you about in the article is where students become the building blocks of DNA. They become the nucleotides. Now, you'll watch this video in just a few minutes, and you'll see how these students who are in my genetics class do this. So they've done this before, and you can kind of tell. But it gives you an idea of how you might be able to use it in your classroom. And as the students make the DNA model, I've kind of gone through and shown you a few different things that I do, but there's much more that you can do in terms of having the students act it out. In addition to that, the students can also create their own DNA model, very inexpensive. When we buy these chenille stems in bulk, it costs maybe about 35 cents per student to be able to make these models. And I've got full instructions in the article on how to make the model so that students can better learn DNA structure. And with this uh, chenille stem model, we're, uh, we're able to use colors that maybe relate to the letters uh, involved, for instance, in the base pairing, G and C, guanine and cytosine. Guanine's green, cytosine's corn colored. We're using a little alliteration to help teach that. Adenine is apricot, thymine is turquoise. And by using that, we help the students learn and uh, memorize the structure of DNA. And again, when they learn that kind of thing, they're going to perform better when it comes to DNA replication and protein synthesis down the road. So I'm going to show you a few videos. One video is going to be where our students are actually making the DNA. These are my genetic students. They're juniors and seniors. And they've done this before, but I had them do it again so you could see what it's like to take the students into the classroom area. Uh, we've got a study area just outside the room that we use, and those students are able to do this kinesthetic activity out there. And then I've got a quick video where I show how I made this model, and you can do this in your classroom. You might get a little few poked fingers here and there, but this, uh, the pain is well worth it. All right, so because Watson and Crick first discovered this in what country? England. England. Okay, so we're going to use an English accent. You guys good at those? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. We'll see. All right, so repeat after me. On. On. And a nucleotide. And a nucleotide. You want to hold your left arm straight out in front of you. I have a phosphate on my fist. I have a phosphate on my fist. I have a sugar on my shoulder. I have a sugar on my shoulder. And I have a nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous <laughs> base. I, I have a nucleotide. Now, as you hold your arms out, you want to make sure you have a right angle between your left arm and your right arm, okay? Make sure you don't have your arms out like this, okay? So now what I want you to do, go ahead and drop your arms just for a second. Remember, a nucleotide is the building block of DNA, and you put a bunch of nucleotides together, you can make that DNA molecule. So let's try it one more time. I, I, I have a nucleotide. I'm a nucleotide. I have a phosphate on my fist. I have a phosphate on my fist. I have a sugar on my shoulder. I have a sugar on my shoulder. I have a nitrogenous base. I have a nitrogenous base. I, I have a nucleotide. I have a nucleotide. Now what I'd like you to do, keeping your arms like this, and remember we've talked about Complementary base pairs, right? A goes with T, G goes with C. Find your complementary base pair. Do you have a C? A, yeah, I do. C. Where's C? Oh, you're a T. Sorry, man. You did. You did. Now, as you do this, keep your angle between your left and right arm. Yeah, straight angle. There you go. And now let's see if we can start the all of them. Remember, your phosphate's going to go with a sugar little in front of you, so let's see you guys shift over here and see if everyone keep your body right angle. Okay, come down. Okay, you guys got to scoot in here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Good job. 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 Good job.
Now remember, this is a strong covalent bond, so go ahead and grab their shoulder. Grab the shoulder. There we go. Nice job. Okay, just for a minute, rest your arms. Rest your arms. Okay, so when we put all the DNA, all the nucleotides yes. together, we've got this DNA molecule. Let's scoot uh, this way just a little bit to give some space down there. Okay, go ahead and reassemble. Reassemble. Now remember, we've talked about the five prime end. So where would the five prime end be here? Right there. Okay, hold that five, five prime end up. How about down there? Can I see your five prime end? Okay. Five prime end. Okay. How about three prime end down here? Well, just your shoulder. <laughs> All right, three prime end down there. Shake that shoulder. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So let's go down the sides and remember what we have on the sides. Remember. We have phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, phosphate sugar, all the way down both sides, right? And what about the bases? What holds them together? Hydrogen bonds. So weak hydrogen bonds. So I can literally, now it takes a lot, actually, a lot of high temperature, but I can split apart these hydrogen bonds, and as a result, I can help start re replicating the DNA by doing that, right? Remember that? All right, good job, guys. Thank you. Here's a quick version of making the chenille stem DNA model. Notice how you want to connect the steps first, then you're going to overwrap with the white to represent deoxyribose sugar. Once you get those done, you'll be overwrapping each step with the complementary base pair. Make sure those pyrimidines that we overwrap are one-third of the width of the step. Finally, you're going to put the hydrogen bonds on, and at the very, very end, you'll be cutting off what would be the three prime ends, and that way you'll have your DNA mo molecule, which can be shown as a double helix. So I hope that when you read the article in the Science Teacher Journal for NSTA that you'll find these two activities very helpful and help motivate your students to where they understand what DNA structure is all about and how it relates to function. Thanks for reading.